Good evening, everyone. 25th today, and uh, we are here at 6 o'clock for the must-know MCQs in anatomy. So anatomy MCQs will cover not just the gross anatomy part. We will have some questions that are shuffled from general anatomy, embryology, neuroanatomy, and uh, we will have all sort of questions. Because uh, in your NEET exams, it is not like streamlined with one subject. You have questions that is shuffled. It's not just anatomy. You have questions from all other aspects. So your mind has to be in that kind of a, you know, uh, orientation that you will be able to understand and grasp and first of all, identify from where the question is coming, from which subject the question is coming and later on work towards solving the question. So that is our motto to train you in that direction. So I have shuffled the question. So it is not just monotonous one sort of questions uh, only from osteology or only from head and neck region. It is not going to be like that. It is all shuffled so that your mind can think in that direction. So that is going to be even more challenging. So let's start must know MCQs. This is going to be of um, when it comes to the difficulty level, it is not going to be that difficult. But you please watch out for my 9.30. There is one more uh, MCQ session and that is going to be a little more challenging compared to this one. So because that will have more of the clinical aspects compared to the one which are going to which we are going to start now, that is at six o'clock. So every day you are going to have a session with the MCQs from anatomy section at six o'clock on YouTube and then again at 9.30 on YouTube and there is special class at 10.30 every single day with the topic. So at the end of the day, you can just wind up with all the MCQs from whatever you studied and then you can start a fresh new topic in your mind. Uh, today's topic is going to be on muscles of mastication. That is at um, 9.30. So that is at 10.30. So you can look forward for the topic on special classes. And uh, you can also download the learners app before that so that you can get a notification for the same. And right now we are going to start with the MCQs. That is must know MCQs. If you have any questions or queries and not able to understand the questions, you can always uh, ping me immediately so that uh, I can, you know, solve your queries then and there. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. So we have um, SK. Hi, SK. So it looks like uh, you're doing a lot of hard work and uh, you are aiming to get a very good seat because I can see that uh, many of the students, including you, have been re doing really well. You have been uh, answering the questions really well, attempting almost all the MCQs and all the best to you. See if you can subscribe to the plus subscription so that you can get 100% of all the material that we uh, keep it available for the students. Okay, so you must remember that this is again a glimpse of what you can get. So if this is this vast, then you can expect the plus courses that we have at an academy platform. So plus courses are the ones which are subscribed. So you have a lot of uh, uh, discounts and uh, other you can avail for these discounts uh, from 10 percent to up to whatever is offered right now you can use my code that is r-o-h-i-n-i you can use this code my name is doctor so you can use the code and then you can work towards getting the subscription for plus courses it is worth it Okay, next one, we'll start with a little introduction about uh, myself. I have about 10 years of teaching experience at USA and India. 
So both these countries have given me sufficient experience in teaching. So to call myself an educator, I feel proud because I have an exposure teaching the students from all these various um, streams like students who are need aspirants, students who are FMG and then who are MCI and CLAB, USMLE, all these students have approached me and many of them have been placed in very good you know, institutions. So, so coaching is up to date. Every now and then slides are new. The material is new, new topics are discussed, everything is new and you will get maximum coverage in plus subscription. So this is one thing to take a look at. Okay, you can follow me at ProAqua. You can follow my page. You will also get notification when you want to access my special classes. These special classes are loaded with different topics. Each day you will get to discuss a different topic. So it is not just the topic discussion. You will also be answering a lot of MCQs at the end of the topic. So that way you know how much you have grasped. So it is a very interactive class. So I would say it is an interactive class and it is at 1030 every, every day p.m. 10.30 p.m. So 10.30 to 11.30 is the time when uh, you can be free and attend to the new topic. So today's topic will be muscles of mastication. This is the topic I'm going to discuss today at 10.30. So don't forget to log in at 10.30. You need the app that is the special app that you need that is learners app. So it is not, uh, you know, a free uh, thing. Uh, YouTube you uh, classes you can just access like that. But for this, you need the app that is Learners app. So that way you have a list of classes that is happening. You will get a notification for the same from all educators. Whatever is happening at that moment, you will get a notification. And also one and more advantage is you will get the PDF notes or the topic notes that has been used for that particular class so that way you need not write down anything or you know keep anything you have the pdf notes ready with you so that way you have the pdf notes and you know exactly what was taught in the discussion class so that way you'll be able to relate and the next day when the mcqs are taken you can answer the mcqs easily so that is one advantage of all these special classes. So please follow me. Use the code ROHINI for all the subscriptions. Okay, first one. Let's start with the first one. Okay, first let's start with the first question. So to see the question, try to understand the question. The first question says, the glenoid cavity articulates with the head of the humerus. We'll start with the simple ones and then it is going to be pretty complicated ones. And then it will be quite challenging and then you will be using definitely a lot of your brains. So this is something that is very simple. Now you, since you have exposure to answering the clinical questions from my last three, four classes, I'm sure this will be a very easy question for you. So the glenoid cavity, you know that that is the shoulder joint, right? Articulates with the head of the humerus by what kind of joint? Do you have fibrous, cartilaginous, plain synovial? Oh, no, because you have head of the humerus is again a rounded structure. So it should be something like a ball. So ball and socket type of articulation and uh, Para says D and SK says D. The answer is D. Let's see whether we are right. Okay, so this gives you a glimpse of joint classification. See, this topic has been done 
long back okay long back we have covered this topic probably beginning of this month in the month of may itself and uh, it should be in the second week sometime i have covered this topic and it has an important uh, you know note uh, what is fibrous joint what is cartilaginous what is synovial so once you have your basic idea basic topics are clear then any complicated question becomes very easy to answer so please go back and see look for this particular chapter on joints so for that you please follow me so that you know what are the playlist that i have so you can watch one by one all the videos and then you will know exactly what topics are covered by me in this month okay we have fibrous cartilaginous and synovial and uh, the mobility is this is immobile slightly mobile and synovial is freely mobile and you have all these things where is the ball and socket type of variety synovial type of joint here ball and socket type of variety so it was not fibrous not cartilaginous and also that is not hinge type of joint is it a hinge type no what is the example for hinge you can give the example of um, knee joint you can give you can give the example of ankle in the upper limb elbow all these are hinge joints okay even including the wrist but not the shoulder joint shoulder joint is ball and socket joint okay all right yeah okay. next one now there is a clinical scenario remember i said we start the mcqs with simple question then we move on to the little complicated ones and this will definitely make you think now there is this person who is about 65 years old so he was a manual worker okay so now he was brought to all this is important or not important you just find out he was brought to that is sometimes to mislead you that is sometimes to mislead you from the main focus so you have to learn to underline or focus on what is important so now he was brought to renal unit for hemodialysis okay and doctor he plans to perform a central venous catheterization and central venous axis with a catheter and uh, what is the best vein for central venous axis anyone what do you think is the best vein what is the best vein for central venous catheterization what is the criteria first of all what is the criteria to do the central venous how should the vein b how should the vein b first of all the criteria for that is it lumen should be big okay and it should have a straight course and also the relation with other structures around is important and then also it should have a superficially it should be available so which one so we have the cephalic we have the basilic we have subclavian internal jugular and external jugular is not possible because it is not a, having a straight course and then we have uh, femoral yes we have femoral and all these and uh, first of all the criteria one more criteria is cooperation from the patient this is also one thing that is important how neatly you can explain the scenario to the patient so all this is important thing so is it subclavian 
is it internal jugular external jugular anterior jugular brachiocephalic i would go with the person who has uh, said b who how many of you said b we we have prabhakar sharma who said b sk said b and uh, ultra clan said b and then uh, yes all of you have said b and i would also go with b we'll see why because there are that is the answer correct but what is medical use why do we use the central venous axis why do we need it see one is to fluids that can be administered which cannot be taken by mouth can be administered and then would harm a small peripheral line so if the peripheral line um it would harm the smaller peripheral line if that is chosen then also to obtain blood for any test and also to me measure the central venous pressure and also the oxygen saturation this is very important now so that is very very important so all these are the uses of central venous okay so now here we have the indications long term intravenous antibiotics nutritionally in chronically ill persons this could be used and then long term pain medications and chemotherapy all this can be administered and drugs that are prone to cause phlebitis in peripheral veins okay sometimes these cause peripheral vein phlebitis that is inflammation of the veins phlebotomy phlebotomy is study of veins so phlebitis is the inflammation of the veins so that can happen with some drugs so such as like calcium chloride hypertonic saline all these things so that time you should see what is alternative then frequent blood draws that can also cause inflammation then you should also be ready to monitor the pressure in the central venous veins so now here with all these keeping in mind all these indications what is chosen is internal jugular vein okay unless the person has some issue with the neck and not able to palpate the vein because it is easy to palpate very very easy to palpate because it is very very superficial and you have to just palpate them between the two heads of sterno cleido mastoid between the two heads of sterno cleido mastoid muscle so since it is this easy the cho chosen vein is internal jugular vein so we have uh, rishab gupta who is uh, joined and uh, we'll go to the next question okay so now here how do you approach the internal jugular vein that was the answer but how do you approach which side is chosen is the right side chosen or the left side chosen that is what is important for us why the left one is not chosen so many studies has been done to you know debate on why not left debate on why left is not chosen so always all these debatable questions are important because many new things are found and uh, many new research is done and things can change so the view can change from uh, per, from you know uh, one study to another study so you should always keep yourself updated with what is new okay now here we have the right side is what is preferred the right side internal jugular vein is what is preferred and head is turned away from the side of peni puncture so if the right side is punctured what is the head should be turning to which side is it the right side or the left side anybody what should you ask the person to turn his head to which side you can ask the person 
or you can ask the patient to turn his head to the opposite side that is One second. Left, yes. Many have been mentioning it as left. You can ask the person to turn his head to the left side because you have chosen the right-sided internal jugular vein. So in the previous slide, I mentioned why do you choose a particular side? And there are so many reasons for that. One is the, the right side. is more accessible. Okay, that is one thing. It is more accessible. Then another one is the skin on the right side is thin compared to the left. Because we use, most of us are right-handed people, right? Yes or no, most of us are right-handed people. Right-handed people. So because of use, because of use, the skin on the right side is more stretched and it is thin. And hence, the central venous catheters are easily used on the right side. And the right side is what is preferred compared to the left side. So this is one of the debatable answer that was given. You can look for all these things under research gate as well. Okay, please go to this also and read more about it. The next one, what is Trendelenburg position? Trendelenburg position is when the person tries to tilt the shoulder. Tilt the shoulder. Okay, tilting the shoulder. So that is one Trendelenburg position. Next, needle placement is locate the triangle that is formed between the clavicle and the two heads of sternocleidomastoid muscle. That is one thing. And then you have to place three fingers of left hand on the carotid artery. And then place the needle about 30 to 40 degrees on the skin lateral to the carotid artery. So first you palpate the carotid artery. Our aim is to find the internal jugular vein. So once you know you are not touching the carotid artery, then you know where the internal jugular vein is. Next, aim towards the ipsilateral nipple under the medial border of the lateral head of sternocleidomastoid muscle. And then this is the depth that you should go 1 to 1.5. And you should avoid probing deep into the neck because you don't want to disturb other structures. Remember, we are trying to approach the superficial most vein. So, we, our aim is to go for the superficial most one, which is internal jugular. So, the depth you have to maintain at this much only. Okay, next. See, there is always, when, uh, when we have a flow, there is always a motivation that we get. When we have good MCQs, right? When we have good MCQs, we always get motivated and uh, we, get, we get motivated to do better. When you have got the answer right, you always feel proud of yourself and you get motivated. So you must remember all these are because of your hard work. And so there is no elevator to success. You are finding your own success by working hard towards it. You are finding uh, your time to watch all these videos and uh, you know participate in these MCQ sessions and try to find where exactly you stand with your studies and revisions. So I would urge you to continue to do so. And then you have to take the states one step at a time, one step, one step at a time so that you reach your target. That is your NEET PG exam. So you have a target. You please book for the day on, on that day. You register yourselves and you know exactly what is your target. And you have to take one step at a time towards your target and we are always there to motivate you guide you as educators okay next one all right the surgical neck of the humerus is related to 
So now this is again a question which is not going to put too much pressure on your brains. It is a simple question. Okay, surgical neck of the humerus. Surgical neck of the humerus. There is anatomical neck, surgical neck. Which one? Anyone? So surgical neck of the humerus is related to? SK says axillary and uh, clan says axillary. Yes, it is not radial. What is radial related to? Radial is related to spiral groove. Ulnar is related to median epicondyle. Median is related to any idea? Cubital fossa. And here the answer is B, that is axillary, which is related to surgical neck of the humerus because it supports or supplies the shoulder joint as well. So that's why it is very close. And it supplies only two muscles, that is deltoid and teres minor. And uh, since it supplies only two muscles, which are very close to the shoulder joint and act only on the shoulder joint, it need not be present this low. Where is medial epicondyle? It's near the elbow. Why should it come near the elbow at all? Why should it come near the shaft at all? It won't come. It will be near the shoulder joint only. Okay, that is what um, SK says, spiral groove, cubital fossa. Yes, you're right. Okay, so this is the X-ray. Uh, does anyone see anything wrong with the X-ray? Anything, uh, you know, peculiar you identify? I don't think anything peculiar I see. Do you see anything? I see this is a normal X-ray. You can see the first strip. You can see the clavicle, coracoid process, supraglenoid tubercle and infraglenoid. So here you have biceps, long head, you have triceps, long head. And then you have this two. This is the line which says the anatomical neck. This is the surgical neck. And you also have this lateral border of the scapula. You can see this lateral border. You have this medial border. Medial border of which one? And the inferior angle. So the scapula, if you just trace, you can see the inferior angle and the medial border as well. So that's how you can identify. This is the scapula. All right. Next one. Okay, we have a 65-year-old lady was brought to the renal unit. So now this is again a question from the same type. She was brought to renal unit for again hemodialysis. Now he wants to perform central venous access with the catheter. Now it could not it need not be that because we are done, but the question is, where is this internal jugular vein? He decided that he would do it on the internal jugular vein because it is easily accessible for the puncture. And uh, where should he look for? Where is the location of internal jugular vein? That is the question. Who knows the answer? Is it jugular notch, occipital triangle, omotracheal triangle in the neck, posterior cervical region? back of the neck and lesser supraclavicular fossa that's also neck way should be the puncture it is jugular notch remember we talked about sternocleidomastoid where is it it is close to the sternum and clavicle and which is close to the jugular notch so you can see this picture where this is the jugular notch. You can see the clavicle here, clavicular head. This is the sternal head. And between the two, you can access the 
subclavian, uh, the subclavian starts here. You can see the internal jugular vein which drains into subclavian. So this is nothing but this is subclavian. So this one drains into subclavian, internal jugular vein side drains into subclavian. Anybody knows how is internal jugular formed? How is it formed? So see, we can always have multiple questions. We did not stick to the question that has been asked. We can form some five, six questions out of one question. So internal jugular, you are immediately, you should be like a curious person asking yourself, where is this internal jugular? How is it formed? How is it formed? Yes, one is correct. Sigmoid sinus. Plus. With what? Internal jugular. Sigmoid sinus plus is what I wrote actually. What is the answer? Sigmoid sinus plus? Anybody? If you know what is external jugular. Yes. Inferior petrosal sinus. Together they give rise to internal jugular vein. See, lit with stim little bit of... Uh, you know, motivation and stimulation, you got your answer. That is, this answer was given by SK and uh, yes, and Ultra, you gave this answer. So, with little motivation, you were able to arrive at the answer. So, external jugular, jugular also you can find in a similar manner. External jugular is by which veins? Anybody? External jugular lies beneath the muscle platysma. Right beneath this it lies the uh, external jugular vein. So you can uh, tell me what is the Answer for external jugular vein formation. I'll give you a hint. One is the deep facial. Okay, that is Platysma. Okay, no one is answering this question. I'm just going to keep it on a hold. There are two, there is this retromandibular vein that formed here. It gives anterior branch and a posterior branch. Posterior branch will join the posterior auricular to form external jugular vein. So this is posterior auricular. Yes, with the Posterior branch of retromandibular vein. So together it joins. This anterior one actually joins with the deep facial vein. And that continues downwards to form internal jugular vein where you have all these, uh, the sigmoid transverse and all these things join. All right, next one. Okay, which internal jugular vein is preferred for catheterization? We talked about this already. Which one is preferred One and why? Why do you think that is preferred? We spoke about this and we also got the conclusion that the preferred side is the right side because of the skin being thin and the structures that are related. Remember, the right side, the arch of iota, Remember, arch of iota branches on the right and left. Okay. So, there will not be many. The relations will differ. The relations will differ on the right and 
left side because of the arch of iota. So because of this, the right side is preferred, right side is more free than the left side. That's why. Okay. Next one. <clears throat> We'll go to the next question. The deltopectoral groove. We'll break the word. Deltopectoral muscle groove contains what? Let's see how many of you can think this is a, you know, um, thorax question. Or you can also find this in the upper limb. Deltopectoral groove. All of the above. I would just give you a negative marking now. SK will get a, Dr. SK will get a negative marking. Why? Do you think all of the above? Deltoid branch of lateral thoracic cephalic pain. A pical group of axillary lymph nodes are present. All of the above, none of the above. You think all these axillary group of lymph nodes are also present? Okay, so let's see. See, this is the deltopectoral groove. What is present? Deltopectoral groove is present between deltoid muscle and pectoralis muscle. That is superior lateral aspect of the pectoral region. That is, you can see in this picture also. And it runs obliquely. That is from the superior medial and inferior lateral and contains only one content. That is cephalic vein. So you can see this cephalic vein. And that is the, yes. Uma, you are also not correct. It is only the cephalic vein. Rest all are present in the axilla. They are all the contents of the axilla, okay? So in the axilla, it is present. All these are axilla. It is not the deltopectoral. So that is the answer. Okay, we will go to the next one. I hope you have understood. See, here you can see the cephalic vein. How it pierces the, what does it pierce? It pierces the clavipectoral fascia. And then it enters the axillary. See, this is pectoralis minor. You can see all these nerves. You can see the ulnar nerve here. And you can see the vein, that is brachial artery and vein. With the ulnar nerve together. They are in a bundle. And you can see the one which is like this. This is the median nerve. This is the median nerve. So here you can see this is the median nerve. And with the same behind that you have this musculocutaneous nerve. Which pierces this muscle. Coracobrachialis. Structures piercing clavi pectoral fascia. Structures piercing clavipectoral fascia, you can remember this as call. Okay, that is one is cephalic vein, acromiothoracic artery and some lymphatics. Okay, that is all this is CAL, call. Some loose fat or dispersed fat. So that is call. Okay, next one. The back of medial epicondyle is related to. So you have uh, this muscle 
what is this muzzle that is going to the head of the radius and just below that you have a tubercle it goes there that is biceps see how this annular ligament is is present and you can also see how all these ligaments are holding this structures you can see that there is a nerve that hooks around this area and that is known as the ulnar nerve that is the ulnar nerve yes so ulnar nerve is related to medial epicondyle of the humerus so you should remember additionally medial epicondyle is inferior to medial supracondylar ridge so it is below the supracondylar ridge and the epicondyle protects this ulnar nerve in one way it protects this ulnar nerve from any fracture of the humerus so it is a groove that is on the back side so it is not a part of cubital fossa so ulnar is not a part of cubital fossa because it runs in the back side of the medial epicondyle next question the axilla contains all of the following axilla has now see you wanted to know what are the structures in the deltopectoral groove but you already mistook and you talked about axilla contents now you can tell what are the contents of the axilla so axilla has all these contents except one thing one thing is odd man here which one is the odd man we have to pick the odd man out because whenever you hear except you have to pick just that which does not belong does it have axillary artery yeah name itself tells you axilla axilla it's there axillary vein yeah there fat of so much of fat yes is it tail of the breast mammary gland yes what about trunks of brachial plexus is it there sk why trunk of brachial plexus then what should be there is brachial plexus not part of the axilla is it not part of the axilla is it a question mark who knows the answer what should be the answer actually is it not trunk of brachial plexus so what are the, what is that is order roots trunks It's not E, Risha, but it is not E. Okay, he deleted also. All right, what is the answer? Is it roots and trunks? What, where do they belong to? Roots, trunks? Yes, it should be cords. Cords are at the axilla. Up to here, it is in the neck. Okay, then comes the branches that go to the arm. So cord is what is in the axilla. It's very, very important. <clears throat> yes, so now cords, yes, the cords and the divisions are in the axilla. Yes, you're right. The cords and the divisions are in the axilla. The roots and trunk is in the neck region. So here instead of trunks, you should have it as the cords that is the thing so that's why we are picking that out okay so next one contents of the axilla now let's see the contents of the axilla 
parts and branches of the brachial flexus as you can see in the axilla. Yes. So we corrected it. Cords and branches we can see. And then the axillary artery and its branches you can see. Then vein, lymph nodes, all this fat, connective tissue, everything. And all these are neurovascular bundle is covered in axillary sheet. So this is the axilla. The boundary of the axilla also you can see. All right. Next. Next question. The bicipital groove of the humerus lodges or contains what it contains. The humerus has bicipital groove. Bicipital groove, the name should give you an indication. Bicipital. So, what is that bicipital? It's also called inter. Yes, Clances biceps, long head of biceps, long head of. Where is this long head of triceps? Is it touching the biceps at all? Touching the humerus? Does not touch. Did you know this? The long head of triceps does not touch humerus at all. It does not touch. So this is one interesting fact. So if you have been hearing this for the first time, if you have been hearing this for the first time and you did not know that it does not touch humerus bone at all, please hit a like. Please go ahead and hit a like. So it is mutual. I give you something that is interesting and the first time you are listening to and you please hit a like if you would like to hear more of such, you know, unique question and answers. So, Yes, only the medial and the lateral head. So you have the medial head and the lateral head. That is the, not the long head. So those two touch, they are present above the above and below the spiral groove. This is the spiral groove. So they are present above the groove and below the groove. And long head, where is this long head is coming from? That is coming from in front glenoid tubercle where is the insertion anybody knows where is the insertion of triceps triceps gets inserted onto which bone is it the radius or the ulna radius or the ulna It goes to the olecranon head of the ulna. Okay. No, it does not go to the radius. It goes to the ulna. Which one goes to the radius? The biceps goes to the radius. Okay, the biceps goes to the radial tuberosity and we were talking about the triceps which goes to the olecranon head of the ulna, the one which looks like a snake, hooded snake. Okay, so this is where it will be the triceps which goes and forms the joint at the back which is elbow joint. So that is where your triceps is. Thank you JKN. I'm happy that you like the explanation and then please hit a like and then follow me. Please follow me so that we can have more and more such interactive MCQs in future as well. 
Okay, we'll move on to the next question. So this is the one we were talking about, the biceps, the long head of biceps. And you can see the short head from where the long head comes, the short head from the coracoid process, long head from the supraglenoid tubercle. And this is how it passes through the groove that is bicepital groove. Which one? The long head. Okay, and how it goes to the radial tuberosity. And it forms a common tendon here. Next question, how to follow? You have to look for me. That is, first of all, you subscribe. Next to this, you can see that there is a drop down. You can see it is written must know MCQs. Go there and click on the drop down. Click on this. You will get a whole lot of things written. And see, you have, you have all the follow. See, to do, follow Dr. Rohini, you have a link. That is, you can follow me at R-O-H-E-Q-U-A. That's what is given. That's the first thing. So it will directly take you to my profile. And there you can simply follow. And once you follow, you get to watch all the videos and everything in a playlist. You can maintain the playlist and you can watch all these at your leisure. Or you can go back and revise. See, revision is always important. You can revise as well. So once you have everything handy, you will be able to revise all the time. So that is one thing. You can download the learning app also. So there is a link also to download the learning app, the Apple Play Store, both of them. And then you also have a link for the, the special code is present, R-O-H-I-N-I -I for your subscriptions. And then you can discount, you can avail. You also have a link for the Telegram app. Telegram app gives you You also have a feedback link and Telegram app gives you all the notes in PDF format. So you can collect the notes as well. So all this you can do. For that first, you have to follow me with this name. So please use this drop down. Click on that and see what happens. Okay, hope I'm clear. All right, clan. That is what I wanted to tell. And then now answer this question. Muscles taking origin from clavicle. What muscles take origin from clavicle? Is it subclavius? We are talking about origin. Okay, is it subclavius, trapezius, pectoralis major, all of the above, only A and B? Which one? Which one takes origin? From the clavicle. We are talking about origin, not insertion. The answer is D, all of the above. What about pectoralis major? Does it also take origin from clavicle? Let's see. So, answer is pectoralis major. So, now here you can see there is a sternocleidomastoid, pectoralis major. And uh, the answer should be actually D, all of them. There is deltoid. We have uh, deltoid here as well, sternohyoid as well. Subclavius is insertion. Okay. Subclavius is insertion. So that is the insertion. So now you look for, go back and see. What was the thing? So was this correct? Subclavius. This is the insertion. This is the origin. This is a origin. So only A and B, all of the above. So none of them, this is the insertion. The muscles taking origin from, 
from the clavicle are these two that is trapezius and the pectoralis minor major that is a and c it should be so the answer should be e there is little confusion with the question itself so when you are able to correct the question itself that means you have understood the subject right okay next one we'll go to probably this is the last question last question okay who can answer this let's see who can answer this jkn we have uh, sk we have ultra clan okay let me see who can answer which one of the following is a branch of second part of axillary artery so axillary artery has first part second part and the third part so they are asking about the second part is it lateral thoracic circumflex circumflex posterior thoracic superior thoracic subscapular so you think of all the branches first first one gives only one branch second it gives two branches three altogether there are six branches from axillary artery so jkn says a and uh, prakar sharma says a anterior circumflex humeral let's see what is the answer so all of you think a is the answer from the second part okay let's see see the answer is a that is you have axillary artery that is starting from the outer border of the first rib this is the first rib you can see the branches you can see the all these are the branches you can see superior thoracic thoracoacromial you can see lateral thoracic posterior circumflex humeral is here anterior circumflex humeral is here okay so these are the branches from this one and there is subscapular artery that is from second part okay subscapular artery is from the second part so now you can see all these are the branches so we pick the answer which one is the answer now which one is the answer is it lateral thoracic or is it subscapular which one is the answer sk says lateral thoracic yes lateral thoracic is the answer and clan also says lateral thoracic see here this is the lateral thoracic and you can see that this is the branch okay this is the branch all right so once it crosses the the small muscle that is pectoralis minor up to here it is the pectoralis minor so this is the demarcation to say this is the second one so till here actually this is part of the third one this is a branch from third part this is also from third part this is also from third part so this what you saw here is from the second part so this one also is from the second part the first one is this one so these are the branches one branch two branches and you can see three of them plus three of them all together six branches so here will be your pectoralis muscle up from here to here so it has so many digitations right it has it is from the second third fourth all these ribs you can see that you have digitations that give you the pectoralis minor muscle and then that is the extension of the second part of axillary artery okay so we have reached the end of the session we have reached the end of the session and next session will be at 9:30 9:30 pm i'll see you with more clinical scenario questions today scenario questions so let's see how many of you can answer the scenario questions and again at 10:30 you have a special class on muscles of mastication so stay tuned for this thank you so much everyone for attending
and signing off me here dr